You want me to? Okay. I'll get, I'm getting ready. I'll hit the speakeasy again. Okay. <laughs> script this is bad can you let me know when you're ready Uh, Spiff and Beth, I let me see if I can get the slide up again. The first ones there already. Um, so, so my my talk today. I'll hit it again. <laughs> It's called, What's So Fascinating About Chinese Art on Second Life? And with my students, we talk about searching for art treasures. And this talk was published by my national organization. Okay. And um, it was just published after 10 years of working on it. Okay, let me see if I can go to the next one. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, where was I teaching? I was on Fulbright in Taiwan. I think it's showing up. Is it showing up in the, in the speakeasy? <laughs> Okay, okay, and would you believe 2012 at the National Chai E University in Mishong, Taiwan, which is a small town about three hours north of Taipei, and it's right in the middle of the, the country. It's a beautiful area, and at the bottom you see this one of the ponds where the guys go every morning to do their Tai Chi.
I'm trying to go to the next slide. Oh, okay. I was teaching undergraduate and graduate classes. The undergraduate class had 18 students in it, and the graduate class had six students. And my hosts who invited me there were doctors Chin Chao Chen, who's in art education, and her husband, who's a, a medical doctor, Paul Lin. And I stayed at their house when I was there as well. And on the right is a picture of the students and, and me. Of course, I was 10 years younger, <laughs> but we sure enjoyed each other. Okay, what, what were we doing there? We were creating digital stories. For over 10 years, I have been teaching students in the virtual world, Second Life, a virtual computer environment, which is regarded as a giant playground. I gave this paper several times. When teaching about Second Life in Taiwan, we are using digital storytelling. I invited the students to explore Chinese sites with me. Uh, we couldn't find any Taiwanese sites, but we found different Chinese ones. They reported intriguing Chinese artistic discoveries in different locations that were historical, uh, museum-based, educational, and critical. Some responses were creative and um, all made connections. Okay, the, let's see, the next slide. Mm -hmm. There it is, okay. So digital storing, telling is a process of constructing a story in a digital experiential place. In this study, digital stories were constructed in the virtual world, ours, Second Life, which is still one of the most popular 3D virtual worlds. Education becomes self-expression and play on Second Life of the virtual world, which is regarded also as a giant playground. And Chin Cho Chen is, is a professor I was working with, where participants expand their natural interests. So what were the guidelines for this project? I asked the students to develop a story to find an unusual artwork, pose a conflict, introduce your character and its role, whether it's a hero, a seeker, a detective, in some Second Life art place and add the links. And right under that are the um, different steps again. So tell us about the artwork, the details. Who made it? Where? Where is it? On Second Life, okay, of course. When did you make it? Or when was it made? How? Why it was made? And tell us why you chose it. Include the name of the artist, the artwork, and the Second Life location so we can come and visit it. Use the screen capture program to capture the story scenes, arrange them in a PowerPoint presentation, and include a creative title for us. Add some character gestures, 
like running or crying, and evaluate your story. Okay, and here are some of the findings. Now, many of the findings were at first are commercial. When one church searches for Chinese art in the virtual world, the first things that pop up are commercial sites. When you put those words in Chinese art, such as Buddha Art Shop, where I visited first, and, and um, there was many historical incense burners there, bonsai trees, Zen gongs, prayer wheels, and this Yuri Marcus Tonga painting, which was retrieved from the Buddha art shop, as you can see, on the left. Okay. We also found psychedelic wall pieces in snow rugs, for example, with resizable fractals, which was a new word for, for us, complex patterns. And you see that example on the right. Now, with my national organization, the Asian professor said, well, this is not exactly Chinese, it's more Asian, but that's okay. They, they accepted it as time went on. Is the speakeasy working? Is okay? Okay. Uh-oh. Okay, here. Okay, maybe I got to go down. Speakeasy. Okay, let me... All the words are up on slides anyway. Okay. I'm, I'm moving the speakeasy down. Okay. Hmm. Okay, there it is. Hold on. At least you'll get the speakeasy background. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay, we're coming with the speakeasy. Now, the next group of findings, the students were religious, religious sites. And here's one of the ones that it's still there. The Chinese Garden, which is a refuge for peace. And I can, you can see my avatar on, on the left inside. And um, I'm sitting there. Um, contemplating, as you can see. <laughs> the next one that was popular was the White Tiger Temple. And I think you can see the, the tigers on this on the sides. <laughs> it's a beautiful place to visit. And and I think that's still there too. Okay. The next one is Jade the Jade Dragons. And boy, this was kind of spooky. <laughs> Some of these um, sites the students um, are not allowed to go on because they chose um, um, 
some uh, all the sites that were acceptable and not the adult ones. And this one was one of the adult ones. Sometimes I wonder how they get there when they're not supposed to be there. But that's the way it goes. <laughs> the jade dragons, these little guys were moving around. Okay. The next group of findings were historical sites. And of course, the one that we all love is the Great Wall. A series of walls from Leidong, China, which is in the east, over into Ganzhou, which is more over in the west, which is 2,500 miles long. It takes 18 months to walk it. But of course, on Second Life, you don't have to do that. <laughs> and I, I've been studying this site for over over 10 years and it changed. It was another one too that was quite interesting. They, they change constantly. Another famous one is the Terracotta Warriors. And um, all the statues were made of terracotta clay which is a low fire clay. And the, this mausoleum is located in Lintong District. In, um, it's hard to say these words, Shang, Shanghai, China. And um, sometimes they, they only have pictures, as you can see. They don't give you the, the original site. <laughs> And students, they really enjoyed this place because one of the students, this is fascinating, and there was a little bit of controversy about this in my national um, conference. This is the creative student version. His bunny avatar jumped on a horse. He took the photo and inserted it into his PowerPoint. He wrote, well, maybe I can become a terracotta warrior too. All the statues were made out of the low fire clay. Now, it, it's so wonderful now because this year is the year of the rabbit. And he he was playing around and some of the professors said, well, you know, I don't know if this is acceptable. I said, why not? This is what they always do on Second Life. So um, I was so happy that he tried this. But you're always going to get a little bit of controversy. Uh, yes, Beth, I know that it's wonderful when they can do something creative. <laughs> okay, there's, there's many museums on Second Life. And this is one of my most favorite one, the Museum of Sacred and Narrative Art. Let's see what there it is. Okay. And when I was there, it featured the story of La Lady Wenji. And there's a picture of her kind on the right. I'm going to scroll. And Lady Wenji means cultured and courageous. She was abducted by northern raiders when she was younger and had children by them. And later she was allowed to return home, as you can see. Okay. There's many educational sites up on Second Life. On, on Chinese Island, Monash University is in Melbourne, Austria, which people were surprised that it was not in China. <laughs> but still, um, 
it's it's wonderful that that they do host so many events there. I think even for us, it was it was important. They have uh, hands on learning there as well. <laughs> And here's the gateway or entrance to uh, the, the university. And it's a really nice picture. And uh, the students loved, loved it, of course. Now, this is one of my favorites. Many of these sites are interactive. Okay. okay. Okay, the avatars can play and they can watch a, a video of the performance of playing this harp, which is on the left. They sit there and, and they get a chance to, to hear the um, instrument. And on the right is my avatar playing it. You sit on the... On the um, chair there and you're you're able to do that and I think that's so exciting well, the students got a chance to um, try that out too as well <laughs> now on on the virtual worlds we this is some of the problems there's avid sexuality and stereotyping. Now, they're supposed to stay away from those sites. They've been told to. Um, and um, they always, at the beginning, are not allowed to use any of the adult sites. They have been very problematic over the years. Now, my colleague, um, who I'm teaching with there, her, her name on Second Life is Han. She discovered that some of the Avatar participants lack understanding of the Asian symbols. She condoned an Asian woman in sexualized posing. Such cultural appropriation is a tangled representation, representation of political, economic, globalized, and virtual hegemony. And here's something I got a big kick out of. Betty Boop clothes for sale in Taiwan. No copyright. Because Betty Boop image dates back to the 1930s. And boy, do the girls over there love her clothes. I even bought a Betty, Betty Boop t-shirt when I was there. It was one of the little marketplaces right outside of Chai University. <laughs> There's many hidden social messages. Many, many. Now this picture I had up when you, we first came in and this is Cal Fay's umbrella installation. As you can see, what a, what a beautiful picture. And at first I thought it was Japanese. <laughs> when we visited the Second Life celebration, let's see. Let me go to the next one. Okay. We flew into an installation, a traditional umbrella landscape made of Chinese ink, shumo, which is brush painting, by the avatar who owns this, Cal Fei, a Chinese-American artist trying to display her heritage. After reading her pop-up note card, we were shocked by its political message. The umbrella 
is a literal and symbolic representation of the umbrella movement in China that is happening, where citizens carry umbrellas to protect themselves from tear gas of the police, which is shocking. Second Life sites can also be problematic, again, with the adult sexuality all over the place. So we have to be careful. Okay. Now, there's many postmodern mashups on the virtual world. Let's see. There, okay. Hmm. This is um, Calfe's R&B city installation, and the video is up on YouTube. Here we go. Okay. Eventually, students visited more contemporary Second Life sites with newer architectural wonders. And some of these are called mashups, mixtures of pop and realistic forms, photography, game, gaming, and filmmaking, and also Second Life Machinima. Now, Calfe in 2007 designed RNB City, a 3D virtual site. On, she did this on Second Life, complete with smokestacks, fire, atmospheric night lights, and fireworks to explore contemporary problems. Such a utopia, dystopian site offers insights and critical reflections on crucial themes of our times, such as overcrowding and pollution. Okay, cultural appropriation or or cultural tourism is another problem on on second life and of course in china okay cultural appropriation is a tangled representation of political economic globalized and virtual hegemony. Some of these reconstructed sites are mashups of commercial and cultural sources, like I said a minute ago. No, the students are more interested in the pop culture sites, gaming, when the study was started, and it still is their, their main source of, of interest. <laughs> Don't we know that? <laughs> We hear that every night, every day on on the news. <laughs> Paul Duncan, who's a member of my organization, pleads for students to read images critically to understand the cultural context. <laughs> behind all this imagery. Now, another famous site, um, as you can see, I'll try to get it up here. Oh, no, not yet. Go back. Oop. Oh, not yet. Did I go too fast? Yeah, this one. Okay. This site is Lily and... Hoji's Land of Illusion, which features many clashes. Okay. Okay. 
Besides concern for protecting their Chinese cultural heritage sites, they value their freedom to be creative. Contemporaries of Fei, Cal Fei, Beijing media artists Lily and Hong Lai resurrected their culture and history of their motherland. They did this also in Second Life. In their video, Land of Illusion, and the rest of the title is Reconstituting History and Culture, an online virtual world. They did this in 207, right through 209. They also explored diverse social classes in contemporary China, as you can see, through symbolized objects. Now, this is um, on um, YouTube now, as well as the um, one you saw before, R&B Village. Okay. <laughs> and there's the YouTube site. Oops. YouTube site is in the speakeasy. It's, it's hard to get this going to the next one. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Here's coming some of the conclusions. Okay. Conceptions of art are constantly changing and expanding, especially in virtual worlds. Beyond mere offerings mentioned earlier, some of the later art sites aim to enhance cultural tolerance and mutual cultural respect. Chinese art places on Second Life such as spiritual hangouts, museum sites, and again, historical reconstructions are all past and present cultural mashups that encompass moral educational values. We need to examine more of these. The students need to also our own cultural appropriation of ideas and spectacles you can see. Perhaps such virtual world venues are can offer a new silk road to entice people into social change, which is so important in the future. Whenever I teach, I use the, the video on the Silk Road and my students really in, enjoy seeing all those sites over and over again. When I teach on Second Life, I am learning with my students. <laughs> and we all we all learn together, which I think is, is so so important. <laughs> Virtual world technology produces an array of positive benefits, such as lower financial costs. But we again, we need to examine all these spectacles for for the future. A 
I mean, and we learn so much as we go along um, on our journey in into the se second life world too, because some of these sites are no longer there. And I'm, I am always so happy when we find something new and the students still, they're still emailing me about what, what they discovered um, on the virtual world. Uh, again, it took 10 years to do this and uh, it's always gonna be, um, different kinds of opinions on it but i'm i'm so happy that um the conference allowed me to do this finally <laughs> thank you for my helpers spiff i enjoyed your presentation thank you for helping me and lori lori lorraine mockford if you have any questions, please, please, uh, there's my email up there, you know. Yeah. Hitting that speakeasy is not easy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. I, we all learn together. Thank you for coming. <laughs>